Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ben Younger. I'm a medical science liaison with NS Pharma, and I'm here to speak with you all today about uh, Vilta Larsen, our exon skipping therapy for boys with exon 53 amenable Duchenne. Uh, my sincerest thanks to all the representatives of PPMD who make these events happen. It's really wonderful to have educational content shared on a regular basis and for the community to have the chance to get together in these bizarre times. Um, I'd like to start by sharing a little about myself and how I got to be here speaking about muscular dystrophy. Uh, I studied neuroscience and got my doctorate from the University of Miami where I studied viral vectors and nerve regeneration. So I've been studying the nervous system for about 10 years, and I have to say it's a fascinating field, and the advances being made by scientists all over the world are inspiring and exciting. Okay, uh, a quick disclosure, and Pharma's parent company is Nippon Shinyaku, and they work on Bill Larson with a hospital in Japan. I also have to mention that I may make some forward-looking statements, such as when our phase three trial is complete, but I cannot predict the future with certainty. And I guess that's never been more true than it is right now, right? And here is HQ in New Jersey, headquarters of North America, and HQ in Kyoto, Japan, where we work on treatments for other rare diseases as well as for muscular dystrophy for the last 101 years, since 1919. All right, let's talk a little bit about basic science. Okay, you all know that DNA is the blueprint of life. It's the instructions found inside all of the cells of your body, and these instructions get translated like from English to French, translated into proteins, which do most of the work inside your cells. Now, in between DNA and protein, in the middle of the process, there is RNA, which gets spliced and diced so that everything fits together perfectly. And you can see how the edges here in blue fit together just right. And this is a way of representing what is called the reading frame. Now, the gene we're talking about is dystrophin, and some of the mutations in this gene that boys have disrupt the reading frame. So these pieces don't fit together just right. So the first result of that sort of mutation is that splicing doesn't proceed correctly. So the RNA downstream to the mutation is lost. And at the end, the cell has a shortened protein which doesn't do what it's supposed to do, which is to act as a shock absorber, like in a car, to transfer the force properly between the contracting muscles and the cell membrane. So each muscle contraction damages and degrades the cell. Now in the next slide, we'll see how exome skipping can bypass this splicing issue in a simple way without touching the DNA itself. Okay, an AON, antisense oligonucleotide, is a chain of simple molecules that look a lot like RNA. And since it looks like RNA, it can bind to RNA and help change the way it acts. The way we designed Vilta Larsen, it binds to exon 53 and prevents its splicing. But splicing continues at the next exon, 54. And you can see how these two edges don't fit these two. But once we skip this exon, the edges of 52 and 54 fit well. So we have restored the reading frame. And what we have at the end is a protein that is missing an exon. So we call it truncated or shortened and containing the most important portions of the protein relating to its shock absorbing function. Okay, let's talk a little about the clinical status of Vilta Larsen. So who is a candidate for this exon skipping therapy? Uh, as I mentioned, Vilta Larsen is being studied in boys with mutations that are amenable to exon 53 skipping. 
for example, boys with deletions of exon 52, or 50 to 52, or 45 to 52, et cetera. Uh, you can see in this pie chart that about 8% of boys with Duchenne may be helped by our Vilta Larsen therapy. And there is a small amount of overlap in amenability, which means that some mutations are open to more than one exon skipping medication. So this pie chart really adds up to more than 100%, and families may have some options to discuss with their neurologist. So about three years ago, the FDA designated Vilta Larsen as fast track, orphan drug, and rare pediatric disease designations. And we've been working since then on our new drug application, which we submitted last year for FDA approval. And even more recently, we started the global phase three trial, uh, which I'll talk more about shortly. Our phase one and phase two trials are complete, which showed proper dosing and some efficacy and safety data in 16 boys in Japan and 16 boys in North America. Now, in the North American study, after a short safety period comparing the lower 40 milligram dose to a placebo control, patients then received either 40 milligrams per kilogram or 80 milligram per kilogram dose for a 24 week total, followed by an ongoing extension study for long term testing. What we're looking at primarily is dystrophin protein production measured from muscle biopsy. And we also kept a close eye on safety concerns, and I'll show a summary of adverse events reported. Uh, all 16 boys in the study had confirmed mutations amenable to 53 skipping, which as I mentioned were uh, deletions of 52 or 50 to 52, et cetera. All boys were four to less than 10 years old, uh, were ambulatory and able to complete various uh, clinical assessments of function. Uh, they were on a stable glucocorticoid dose for at least three months. And some exclusion criteria, boys that could not enroll were those who had been sick recently or had other health concerns uh, or were taking other investigational drugs. And here are the results of our phase two study. As you can see, we found almost 6% dystrophin production in both 40 milligram and 80 milligram dose groups. This slide is a great takeaway of the effectiveness of Vilta Larsen in terms of the dystrophin protein biomarker. And restoring the protein is the first step in improving function in these boys with Duchenne. And we were able to get an average of 5.9% of normal after just six months of this weekly infusion. As I mentioned, in addition to efficacy of treatments, we also kept a close eye on safety. And here is a summary of the adverse events reported. Overall, we had no serious adverse events that were related to treatments during those 24 weeks or for the several years afterwards in the ongoing extension trial. And of course, we will continue monitoring safety in the future, which brings us to our upcoming phase three trial known as RACER 53. We already have 35 sites lined up in 15 countries. So we'll start with a brief summary. This is going to be a randomized, double blind, placebo controlled study. We're looking for 74 boys, age four to less than eight to receive a once weekly intravenous infusion at 80 milligrams per kilogram or a placebo at a one to one ratio. So next are the endpoints and measurements that we'll be looking at. So primarily we're looking at the time to stand from supine position, but we're also looking for time to run and walk 10 meters, the six minute walk test, North Star ambulatory, time to climb four steps, and various tests of dynamometry. Uh, this also will include some physical exams, lab tests, ECGs, and measurements of vital signs. Inclusion criteria are males to uh, four to less than eight with the confirmed 
DMD mutation that's amenable to 53 skipping. Uh, boys must be able to walk independently with a time to stand at baseline of less than 10 seconds. And again, a stable dose of glucocorticoids for at least three months. Exclusion criteria, chronic or current viral infections, severe cardiomyopathy, behavioral problems, surgery within three months, uh, other investigational drugs within three months or five times the half-life, or any gene therapy. Now, all of these details can be found online on our on the clinicaltrials.gov website, and you can search for Vilta Larsen or RACER53, which is the name of the trial. So just to give a basic overview of study design, it's gonna start with screening and randomization into the two groups, then 48 weeks of treatment, and then a 30-day follow-up, after which all patients will receive Vilta Larsen. Again, if you have any questions, more details can be found at clinicaltrials.gov. Uh, I'm pleased to report that COVID-19 hasn't disrupted our plans going forward in terms of this phase three trial or our anticipated PADUFA date or the recent approval of Vilta Larsen by the Japanese equivalent of the FDA. Overall, we're focused on getting these patients access to Vilta Larsen as quickly as possible. Uh, and I'm really grateful to have the opportunity to be here virtually with all of you. Thank you.